Malcolm was king of the Scots from 1005 until his death. He was a son of King Kenneth II. The prophecy of Birchand says that his mother was a woman of Leinster and refers to him as Foranach, the destroyer. To the Irish annals which recorded his death, Malcolm was Ard Reulbin, High King of Scotland, in the same way that Brian Baruma, High King of Ireland, was not the only king in Ireland. Malcolm was one of several kings within the geographical boundaries of modern Scotland. His fellow kings included the King of Strathclyde, who ruled much of the southwest, various Norse Gael kings on the western coast and the Hebrides and nearest and most dangerous rivals, the kings or Mormars of Mora. To the south, in the Kingdom of England, the Earls of Bernicia and Northumbria, whose predecessors as kings of Northumbria had once ruled most of southern Scotland, still controlled large parts of the southeast. Early years Malcolm II was born to Kenneth II of Scotland. He was grandson of Malcolm I of Scotland. In 997, the killer of Constantine is credited as being Kenneth, son of Malcolm. Since there is no known and relevant Kenneth alive at that time, it is considered an error for either Kenneth III, who succeeded Constantine, or, possibly, Malcolm himself, the son of Kenneth II. Whether Malcolm killed Constantine or not, there is no doubt that in 1005 he killed Constantine's successor Kenneth III in battle at Monzi Verd in Strathfern. John of Forden writes that Malcolm defeated a Norwegian army in almost the first days after his coronation, but this is not reported elsewhere. Forden says that the bishopric of Mortlick was founded in thanks for this victory over the Norwegians. Children. Malcolm demonstrated a rare ability to survive among early Scottish kings by reigning for 29 years. He was a clever and ambitious man. Brehon tradition provided that the successor to Malcolm was to be selected by him from among the descendants of King Aedh, with the consent of Malcolm's ministers and of the church, ostensibly in an attempt to end the devastating feuds in the north of Scotland, but obviously influenced by the Norman feudal model. Malcolm ignored tradition and determined to retain the succession within his own line, but since Malcolm had no son of his own, he undertook to negotiate a series of dynastic marriages of his three daughters to men who might otherwise be his rivals, while securing the loyalty of the principal chiefs, their relatives. First he married his daughter Bethic to Crinan, Thane of the Isles, head of the House of Athel and secular abbot of Dunkeld, then his youngest daughter, Elith, to Sigurd, Earl of Orkney. His middle daughter, Donada, was married to Finlay, Earl of Moray, Thane of Ross and Cromarty and a descendant of Loan of Dalriada. This was risky business under the rules of succession of the Gael, but he thereby secured his rear and, taking advantage of the renewal of Viking attacks on England, marched south to fight the English. He defeated the Angles at Carrum in 1018 and installed his grandson, Duncan, son of the abbot of Dunkeld and his choice as Tanist, in Carlisle as king of Cumbria that same year. Bernicia, the first reliable report of Malcolm II's reign is of an invasion of Bernicia in 1006, perhaps the customary Kreshrig, which involved a siege of Durham. This appears to have resulted in a heavy defeat by the Northumbrians, led by Uttard of Bamborough, later Earl of Bernicia, which is reported by the Arnolds of Ulster. A second war in Bernicia, probably in 1018, was more successful. The Battle of Carum, by the River Tweed, was a victory for the Scots led by Malcolm II and the men of Strathclyde led by their king, Owen the Bald. By this time Earl Uchtid may have been dead, and Eric Coconason was appointed Earl of Northumbria by his brother-in-law Cnut the Great. Although his authority seems to have been limited to the south, the former kingdom of Daria, and he took no action against the Scots so far as is known. The work to obsession of Dunelmi claims that Tuchtred's brother Edwulf Cudder surrendered Lothian to Malcolm II, presumably in the aftermath of the defeat at Carum.
This is likely to have been the lands between Dunbar and the Tweed as other parts of Lothian had been under Scots control before this time. It has been suggested that CNUT received tribute from the Scots for Lothian, but as he had likely received none from the Bernician earls this is not very probable. CNUT CNUT reports the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle led an army into Scotland on his return from pilgrimage to Rome. The chronicle dates this to 1031, but there are reasons to suppose that it should be dated to 1027. Burgundian chronicler Rodulfus Glaber recounts the expedition soon afterwards, describing Malcolm as powerful in resources and arms, very Christian in faith and deed. Ralph claims that peace was made between Malcolm and CNUT through the intervention of Richard, Duke of Normandy, brother of CNUT's wife Emma. Richard died in about 1027 and Rodulfus wrote close in time to the events. It has been suggested that the root of the quarrel between CNUT and Malcolm lies in CNUT's pilgrimage to Rome, and the coronation of Holy Roman Emperor Conrad II, where CNUT and Rudolf III, King of Burgundy had the place of honour. If Malcolm were present, and the repeated mentions of his piety in the annals make it quite possible that he made a pilgrimage to Rome as did Macbeth and Macfindleich in later times, then the coronation would have allowed Malcolm to publicly snub CNUT's claims to overlordship. CNUT obtained rather less than previous English kings, a promise of peace and friendship rather than the promise of aid on land and sea that Edgar and others had obtained. The sources say that Malcolm was accompanied by one or two other kings, Certainly Macbethard, and perhaps Sekmar Catch Macragnale, King of Man and the Isles, and of Galloway. The Anglo-Saxon chronicle remarks of the submission, but he, Malcolm, adhered to that for only a little while. CNUT was soon occupied in Norway against Olaf Haraldsson and appears to have had no further involvement with Scotland. Orkney and Mora, a list of daughter of Malcolm, married Sigurd Lordvisson, Earl of Orkney. Their son Thorfinn Sigurdsson was said to be five years old when Sigurd was killed on 23 April 1014 in the Battle of Clontarf. The Orkneyinga saga says that Thorfinn was raised at Malcolm's court and was given the Mormardom of Caithness by his grandfather. Thorfinn, says the Heimskringler, was the ally of the King of Scots and counted on Malcolm's support to resist the tyranny of Norwegian King Olaf Haraldsson. The chronology of Thorfinn's life is problematic, and he may have had a share in the earldom of Orkney while still a child, if he was indeed only five in 1014. Whatever the exact chronology, before Malcolm's death a client of the King of Scots was in control of Caithness and Orkney, although, as with all such relationships, it is unlikely to have lasted beyond his death. If Malcolm exercised control over Moray, which is far from being generally accepted, then the annals record a number of events pointing to a struggle for power in the north. In 1020, Macbethard's father Findleach Macruaidri was killed by the sons of his brother Mael Brigta. It seems that Malcolm Macmael Brigta took control of Moray, for his death is reported in 1029. Despite the accounts of the Irish annals, English and Scandinavian writers appear to see Macbethard as the rightful king of Mora. This is clear from their descriptions of the meeting with CNUT in 1027, before the death of Malcolm Macmail Brigti. Malcolm was followed as king or earl by his brother Gilacom Garn, husband of Gruoch, a granddaughter of King Kenneth III. It has been supposed that Macbethard was responsible for the killing of Gile Coem Gain in 1032. But if Macbethard had a cause for feud in the killing of his father in 1020, Malcolm too had reason to see Gile Coem gain dead. Not only had Gillacomgan's ancestors killed many of Malcolm's kin, but Gillacomgan and his son Lulloch might be rivals for the throne. Malcolm had no living sons, and the threat to his plans for the succession was obvious. As a result, the following year Gruach's brother or nephew, who might have eventually become king, was killed by Malcolm, Strathclyde and the succession.
It has traditionally been supposed that King Owen the Bald of Strathclyde died at the Battle of Carrum and that the kingdom passed into the hands of the Scots afterwards. This rests on some very weak evidence. It is far from certain that Owen died at Carum, and it is reasonably certain that there were kings of Strathclyde as late as the 1054, when Edward the Confessor sent Earl Seawood to install Malcolm son of the King of the Cumbrians. The confusion is old, probably inspired by William of Malmesbury and embellished by John of Forden. But there is no firm evidence that the Kingdom of Strathclyde was a part of the Kingdom of the Scots, rather than a loosely subjected kingdom. Before the time of Malcolm II of Scotland's great-grandson Malcolm Canmore, by the 1030s Malcolm's sons, if he had any, were dead. His grandson Thorfinn would have been unlikely to accept it as king by the Scots, and he chose the sons of his other daughter, Bethic who was married to Crinan, lay abbot of Dunkeld, and perhaps Mormar of Athol. It may be no more than coincidence, but in 1027 the Irish annals had reported the burning of Dunkeld, although no mention is made of the circumstances. Malcolm's chosen heir, and the first Tanay's rig certainly known in Scotland, was Duncan. It is possible that a third daughter of Malcolm married Findleach Mac Edry and that Macbethid was thus his grandson, but this rests on relatively weak evidence. Death and Posterity Malcolm died in 1034, Marianus Scotus giving the date as 25 November 1034. The king lists say that he died at Glamis, variously describing him as a most glorious, or most victorious, king. The annals of Tigernash report that Malcolm Maxinida, King of Scotland, the honour of all the west of Europe, died, the prophecy of Birchen. Perhaps the inspiration for John of Forden and Andrew of Wintone's accounts where Malcolm is killed fighting bandits says that he died by violence. Fighting, the parasites, suggested to be the sons of male Brigter of Mora. Perhaps the most notable feature of Malcolm's death is the account of Marianus, matched by the silence of the Irish annals, which tells us that Duncan I became king and ruled for five years and nine months. Given that his death in 1040 is described as being at an immature age in the annals of Tiger Nash, he must have been a young man in 1034. The absence of any opposition suggests that Malcolm had dealt thoroughly with any likely opposition in his own lifetime. Tradition, dating from Fordun's time if not earlier, knew the Pictish stone now called Glamis II as King Malcolm's gravestone. The stone is a class II stone, apparently formed by reusing a Bronze Age standing stone. Its dating is uncertain, with dates from the 8th century onwards having been proposed. While an earlier date is favoured, an association with accounts of Malcolm's has been proposed on the basis of the iconography of the carvings. On the question of Malcolm's putative pilgrimage, pilgrimages to Rome, or other long-distance journeys, were far from unusual. Thorfinn Sigurdsson, CNUT and Macbethard have already been mentioned. Roggenvold Carly Colson is known to have gone crusading in the Mediterranean in the 12th century. Nearer in time, Dyfnal of Strathclyde died on pilgrimage to Rome in 975 as did male Ruinade Ua Mela Doraide, king of the Cene Acute El Conail, in 1025. Not a great deal is known of Malcolm's activities beyond the wars and killings. The Book of Deer records that Malcolm gave a king's use in Biffy and in Pet Macgobrag and to Davox to the monastery of Old Deer. He was also probably not the founder of the bishopric of Mortlick Aberdeen. John of Forden has a peculiar tale to tell, related to the supposed laws of Malcolm McKenneth, saying that Malcolm gave away all of Scotland, except for the Moot Hill at Scone, which is unlikely to have any basis in fact.